Hi guys and welcome to another episode of 8 Bit Retro Refix and on this week's episode we have an Amiga 500 that doesn't respond, we've got a black screen. Also in today's video you're going to have week, well Saturday's third set numbers for the joystick giveaway. And don't forget to collect the email address, the numbers from April's Saturday videos and then email them across to me to win that joystick in the joystick giveaway so good luck with that guys what we've got is an Amiga A500 it's one that I picked up locally quite a long time ago um, I was told it had a red screen um, I have switched it on to have a quick look see what it does and it gives us a black screen so I'm just going to switch it on now and let you have a look you'll, you'll see the caps lock light light up and you'll see the power light come on and it'll remain with a black screen so I've turned that on now. You can see the power light that's lit up over this side. Caps lock light. It is switching on and off. So you can see it's switched on. The power light's on up in the right hand corner. We've got a caps lock light that's lit look. You can see it going on and off. Oh, and it's stopped. I switch it off. Switch it back on, power light comes on, nothing else. There's no caps lock light, it comes on, off, on, off, on, off. Three, four, five. So it comes on and off about five times and then cuts off. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the lid off and we'll take a look inside and see what's there. It's very easy, I've already dismantled it. There's just there's a screw here, a screw up here and one just down here and there's three at the back there's one there one there and one there just be careful with the clips at the sides one there's one at this far side and one at the opposite side here just make sure they unclip properly or they'll end up breaking the case which has happened on this occasion with this one so, a little bit of epoxy resin in there and i think you wouldn't even notice that so we can repair that up and it looks good just down there I'll focus on for you. So we'll repair that at a later date. I just want to get this thing up and running at the moment. So let's pull it apart. Switch it back off. Just remove the keyboard connector. Lift the keyboard out of the way. Now we're down to the bare bones of the unit. The funny things with the A500 is they like to name everything. So we've got names all over. So here's Gary. Here's Even, which is a CIA. No, oh, that's off there. And that's off there. Let's just take them out of the way for a minute. Needed and took that away. So you've got Even, part up there, CIA. Does all the input controls. You've got odd up there, ODD, which is another CIA chip. Denise over here. This here is a CPU. Here is your Kickstart ROM. And here's Fat Agnes. So they're all the chips that we've got in order at the moment. So we've got this screen issue. There's not a lot going on. Normally, if you're getting the um, shift lock key switching on and off, it usually points to the keyboard. He's talking to the CPU. So I'm going to be tempted at first and just swap out these two CIAs and see if we get any response. I'm just looking at them CIA chips now and I can see that there are 8520 and an 8520. So what I'm tempted to do at first is just swap these two over and see if we get any difference from it. So I'm just going to do that now and then I'll come back. All right, you probably can't see on time but these two chips now I've just swapped around because they are the same chips. 
So I'm just going to power that on now and let's have a look. We've still got nothing. So we've still got nothing. When we switch on, let's see if the unit still responds the same. So we've got that light and the, and the caps lock light still operates on and off. We get about five or six and then it stops. Yep, it's doing exactly the same. So I don't suspect them CIA chips, unless it's both of the CIA chips. So I've got another unit which does work. So what I'm gonna do is just pull them CIA chips back out and swap them over with the other one. So I've just to pull these two CIA chips out of this unit. I've pulled the spares out of the other board. I'm just gonna pop these back in here now and see if these work. So pop that in there. No. Nope. So that reacts exactly the same. So we know that it's not these two CIA chips. So I'm just gonna lift them back out again and change them back. I just remember which way notches go. The silk screen, the screen does show you on it and there is a notch on the chips. You can't always go by all the chips in one way. The majority of the time they do, but not all of them. So that's that. So we may as well just continue and get these other chips. So what I'm going to put out is Denise over here and see if Denise makes us a difference. So I'll pull Denise out of this one. is out and I'll just go get the other Denise chip and we'll try that okay so we've got the Denise chip back I'm just gonna pop Denise in here and we'll flick the switch Exactly the same, we're getting about five or six caps locks and then it switch doesn't do anything. So we'll carry on and proceed. And the camera stopped working there for a second. So as I say, the Gary chip is down here. I've just pulled the original Gary chip out and popped the original Gary chip, <laughs> the donor Gary chip back in. Um, and we'll switch it on, see what it does. Nope, still does exactly the same. The caps lock is still responding exactly the same. So now we'll move down to Paula. So I'm just going to pull that Gary back out. That's Gary out. That Gary back in. And go for Paula. Paula's out. Put the donor Paula, pop her back in. And we'll see if that works. Click the switch. No, nope, looks like we've got exactly the same. Still nothing. So we'll move on. So I've swapped Paula back over. So they've all got the original chips back in here now. So the only ones that we've got left is these three here. I really don't think it's this, but it could be. So I'm just gonna try the kickstart ROM now. I've been told the kickstart ROM normally shows you a red screen, but I'm just gonna swap the kickstart ROMs over and just see if they make a difference. So that's the kickstart swapped over. I won't pan you back up again, I'll just flick it and see what happens. And 
absolutely nothing. So I'm just going to swap them chips back around again and we're going to go for this one next, the CPU. Okay, so I've not done it on camera, but these are very difficult to get up and out of here. They're quite big, so I've already lifted this one. So I'm going to drop that one out now. I'm going to pop this one back in. What I normally do is I just make sure the one side of the chip legs are sat in, and then I push across to that light side and just slot them in, and then push down. Like I was saying to you before, you can't always go off the notches. This one goes down here. The kickstart run goes up here. But all these top side chips go that way. So these two are actually the other way around. So you can't really go by that. So we've got the CPU in now. Let's uh, see if that starts. So no. It's not the CPU. So the only thing that's left now what we've got is the Fat Agnes. So I'm going to try and uh, lift Fat Agnes out of there. They are usually quite tight in there, they don't normally come out very easy. And then we'll try that. So I'm just going to try and get Fat Agnes out of here. These are quite good, all you do is squeeze. Squeeze tightly. So that's now come out of there, but I'm sort of looking at these chips and I need to find out the one that I took out of the donor board was that way. And can you see that? So I need to find out which is pin one on these fat Agnes's. Because I don't know, I think it looks like somebody's had this one out. I mean, the other one, when I took this one out of the donor, it was sat here. Which is, the writing's upside down. I know it's writing, I get that. But it's got a yellow dot to the bottom left as well. You see, this one's got a dot to the bottom right, and that's the way it was positioned in the board. So I need to have a look at that before we progress. So I've gone ahead and we've swapped Fat Agnes. And Fat Agnes still doesn't do anything at all. Hmm. So I'm just going to plug the other one back in now. Now I've swapped everything around and just make sure the other one's running. So I've swapped all this. This is the other unit now. It's just booted back up. As you can see, it's booted back up to the 1.2. These are the chips that we've swapped out. I'm just right tempted to pull Fat Agnes back out of there and try it in this one. So I think I'm going to pull all them chips now out of that other, other unit and pop them all in here and let's see if she fires up. At least we'll know the chips are good in the other unit. I mean, at the end of the day, we could have multiple chips and we're not realising. So I'm just going to do that now and we'll see what happens. So first up, I'm just going to grab Paula again. So tight in these sockets. I'm just going to continue with screwdriver until she's out. Paula out. Just put Paula in. And flick her on. Yep. So we know Paula's okay. So I'm going to put Paula, this Paula, back in the other unit. So we know it works anyway, so that's fine. So that's all of it's in there. I'll get my extractor now, wherever I put it. Top, top it there. Joystick giveaway, number set three coming up now for you. I'll flick of the switch. Seems to be coming on. 
yep, we've got the screen again. So we know that Paul is okay. So I'm just going to lift Gary now on the other one. I know we're going around in circles, but it tests, doesn't it? Let's Gary out. Let's put the Gary in. She's in. Let's flick the switch. It's coming back on again. We've got life. And we've got the screen. So I'll just grab them other two CIAs. I know we've swapped them around the other way, but I never tried the other two CIAs in this board. So we're just going to try that. Right, so I've got them chips. Let's talk to these CIAs. Come out very well, but we'll sort that out. We'll put that CIA back in there. Make sure all the legs have gone in correctly. Yep. We'll put that one back in there. Let's see if it boots. Ooh. Ooh, we've got a difference. Ha 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 ha! Looks like we may have found one. Good. Oh. Yep, it doesn't like that. So. We swapped them and it didn't work. So let's just pull the CIA. Let's just pop this one. Back in, it's the original one. Make sure that chip looks in. Yeah. So that's that's an original one. That's an original one over there. So we'll just flip the switch. And she boots. So that's up and running. So let's just do that again with the other chip. Just lift that one out. We know that's a good working one. We'll just pop that one back in there. See what happens. She boots. So we've got this good working one. So we've got this one that doesn't boot anything when we switch it back on. I'm going to swap that back into that one again just to double check that I've got the CIAs the right way around. So I'll lift that one out. So they're good, we know they're good working ones at the back of the Amiga. We'll put this one back in and flip the switch. Nope, we've got Gabley on the screen and a red screen. So I'd say that CIA is dead. I'm just going to plug the keyboard back in. And let's see what happens to the lights. And we'll put it on. Yeah, it does it. It does it. We've got a different screen on. It's purple screen. But it does it. We've got a power light on. Over the other side. And the shift lock has done its five and doesn't continue. I'll we'll flick that off. Pull that chip. We now know that's bad. Put one of these CIAs back in. Flip the switch. comes on properly. Power light's delayed and then it comes on. We've got white screen. That continues to switch on and off.
So, great. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to take them two CIA chips, and I'm going to stick them back in the other machine. So we're back over at the faulty machine. I've put the two CIA chips in from the other one. That's the bad one that we were dealing with. So now let's uh, flip that switch and see what happens. Wow, she's come on, going on properly. We've got a power light coming on on this one. Didn't on the other one. So yeah, we've got uh, version 1.3 there. So while we've got it booting, so I took an EEPROM burner and I created myself an Amiga A500 diagnostic ROM. So I'm just gonna pull that ROM out and we're just gonna see if diagnostics will run on this system now and see how, what shape it's in, if you know what I mean. Okay, so we're just gonna do that. Test CIAs. Press any keys to the test. So that CIA is tested out nice. Um, I don't know what IRQs are, but we'll have a look. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Experimental. Ooh, let's go back to main menu. Graphic tests. Okay, that worked. Okay, don't know what that is. Might be something I need to adjust on the 1084S. Test roll, on graphic test. Yeah, that's moving, okay. Test raster. CPU busy, waiting for raster. Flicker is normal. Tested serial keys. Takes out too much time. So that's done. Let me just check the RGB. RGB looks good. Let's take the main menu. Port tests, keyboard tests, setup. Okay, setup don't work. Well, not all the tests are. Let's have a look. We might as well while we're here. Audio config details, RCT test. Let's just check the audio while we're here. Just plug the audio cables in. So they're all okay. Audio menu, play test module. That seems to be working all okay. Skip out of that. Press any button to exit. Now I'm pressing buttons and no exits. So I'm to switch it off again. 
Is there else we can look in there? I can't test part tests because I haven't got anything else connected to it. We can do keyboard tests. Exits. <laughs> you can see all them. Numbers are changing, characters at top look. You can't see on camera, but up here it's actually showing me the whole of the letter and so I'm pressing B, it's on N at the minute, so if I press B, it's gone B, N, M. So you can test, make sure all the... You don't need to do all, you just see if they're changing. So they seem all okay. So those diagram test works that we did, that we made. If you want to, to see how to make these uh, Amiga ROMs, then post a comment down in the in the comments box at the bottom and I'll come back to you and I'll see about making a video showing you how to burn these ROMs and create these kickstart ROMs um, in another video. But it'd be good to hear from you anyway. So, right, what I'm going to do now is just flick the switch, put that um, kickstart ROM back in and then we'll see if it'll boot again. So I've got a couple of games. I've got Rally on here that we've looked at in previous videos. I've got James Bond as a backup and Yolanda, which I do have the originals for them. So I've put the Kickstart background run back in. I've taken the diagram out that we made. Um, I've reconnected the disk drive. And what I've got in the disk drive is a Rally Sport game or a Rally game that I know works. Yeah, it's a backup. I do have the original up on the shelves. Um, I'm just going to pop that in there. Let's see if it turns back on again, double check. Yep, yeah, we're back up, look, 3.1. Pop the disc in. This will be a good test for us as well to make sure that this disc drive is working okay. Seems to be at the minute, it's reading away. Just the camera a little bit for you, I don't know whether it's Oh, we've got the music, we've got sound coming out, that's good to do. Might have to wait a little bit until we go past this screen. Or we might have to put the joystick in. So I'd say that's a fix. So all that run around that we've just done, swapping all them chips backwards and forwards, very, very strange. I mean, I lifted them other two out and put the two straight in, they didn't work. But uh, that was a little culprit. I'll read it again, I think that's a 8520 chip and that's a 26 weeks of 89 is that chip. So that was the little bleeder that caused all the problems, just one little CIA chip. I know we went around about the houses, but sometimes you have to do these things. I mean I started swapping all them out, I swapped the chips one by one, it made no difference. So then I decided to put the good working machine in and start swapping the bad chips into the working machine and obviously as soon as you find a bad one it's going to pop that straight up so it's always handy to have a backup machine that you can do this with um, I just need to order another 8520 chip from the good old flea bay and put that back in the machine and then I've got another good working machine so once again thank you for watching another episode of 8-bit retro refreaks don't forget to collect your numbers for the joystick giveaway and collect the email address. Please drop me a comment in the bottom um, if you'd like to see how to write these kickstart ROMs and create them yourself. You may want to upgrade to like 3.14 or whichever way you want to do it. You might want to do Amiga 1, Amiga 1200s, you know, where they've got the two ROMs, the high and the low. You put a 3.14 in there, which allows you to have um, a partition then 
on the CF cards or SD cards, whichever you're using, and the partition can be as big as you like. We did used to be restricted, I can't quite remember what it was, but I think we were restricted down to um, a two gigabyte. I could even be wrong. Hmm. If I'm wrong, pop a comment in the bottom, let me know what that partition, minimum partition used to be back in the day. I can't remember these days off the top of my head. But I'm going to leave you there, and um, I've already said it, but thank you again for watching another episode of 8-Bit Retro Refix, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!